everyone, it's Jess Hearts and today we are building our farmhouse and I asked on Twitter if you guys would like a tour instead of a pile of screenshots at the end and you guys wanted a tour and I'm kind of re relieved about that because honestly there is so much detail in this build that it would take so many like shots and just so much time compiling all those screenshots together. Plus I won't lie, um, when I finished building this I legit was in tab mode just running around the farm and the house having a jolly good time. Like I was pretending I was in like a first person RPG. I actually am in love with this build and I think it's definitely one of my better builds I've ever done. I'm really proud of it. <laughs> and I know some people will be like, WTF, you are so up yourself and I like, no. No, I'm not. I'm just, I just have some pride in my work. There's nothing wrong with having pride in your work. I am a little proud, socially awkward turnip and that is okay. <laughs> Speaking of that though, like this probably doesn't go for a lot of people. Um, but how difficult can it be making friends when you're older? Like when you don't go to school and you don't go out. I've made a few new friends in the last two years and such, but like I need myself the Jane to my Daria, if you get me. I don't know. I think I've always struggled to make like best friends that are female. <laughs> I don't know. I definitely have a few that are like amazing friends. Don't get me wrong. But like I said, I definitely need my partner in crime. Maybe I'll go out and put an ad in the local newspaper being like 21 year old turnip that plays the Sims all day and has dogs. <laughs> I'm rambling. But anyway, right now we're just kind of like setting up the farm for what I'm going to do here. So I've got obviously the shell of the house and the barn and like putting a little ch chicken coop area here and there's going to be like a little fenced in area for like uh, cattle of some kind if we ever get that. But yeah, I'm genuinely really in love with this build and I hope you guys enjoy this um, speed build and tour. But yeah, speaking of my dog, some of you may know I'm finally home from house sitting so I get to see my amazing Milo and Polly which is great. I miss being followed around everywhere by Milo and honestly I didn't think I would ever be able to say that I got extremely excited to see a puppy pee on newspaper. Like that's just not something you'd picture yourself being excited about but that means he isn't peeing on the carpet or the beds or anywhere else he's not meant to he's like toilet training himself really well so that's super good but he still loves sitting in my lap as I edit and record and just whenever I'm sitting at my desk like right now he would just hop on my bed and be like mom please pick me up it's been five minutes and I haven't been touched I don't know why I gave him a British accent but that was a terrible British accent <laughs> But he's doing really well for those who have been asking. He's also getting a bit bigger and I really don't like it. And that's all I'm going to say about my baby growing up. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Oh, yes. I also wanted to say, oh, my God, you guys, the entries to my base game build challenge were amazing. I'm honestly still blown away. I think it's always a fun idea to go back to base game and give it a shot. You know, like there might be a lot to do gameplay wise, but. There is so many possibilities building and creativity wise, in my opinion. Plus, I think how far it's come since the initial release is huge. Like all the great patches we've had. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, how do you guys feel about the rebrand? Personally, I'm not bothered by it overly, aside from like the huge banner that takes up half the menu and shows all the packs that you haven't got and that you have got. And it's like suggesting you build a bundle and yeah. Marketing 101, but aside from the ethical stuff, it doesn't really bother me. I don't even notice it really. I'm glad that they are dimming the colours down on the loading screen for those who are sensitive to colours and such. That's awesome. But I swear, this just kickstarted a whole modding revolution. Like, so many loading screen skins have made, um, people have made... And we're honestly just all spoiled for choice. Mind you, my mods folder has been sitting on my desktop for like a month now. I just don't play as a sim. And like the only reasons I have mods in the game is like for CC, uh, for the sims pretty much. So I don't really need the mods folder in game when I'm building. But that also reminds me, I wanted to know if you guys would like me to do a build challenge for myself. Entirely using CC from like the flooring to the roofing, plants windows, you name it. Other than the actual mechanics of the game, it'll all be CC. But that's up to you guys. I could even do a Maxis renovation at the end, but it would also be up to you guys if I should uh, use Max Match or Alpha. If you don't know what uh, those terms are, Maxis Match is essentially CC that matches the design of The Sims. It looks like it was actually made by the Maxis team. And Alpha pretty much is like ultra realistic looking sometimes. It Honestly, sometimes in my opinion, it looks a little bit like The Sims 3, 
But yeah, here's a little confession. I actually, way before I started uploading builds to the gallery, used to have loads, and I mean loads of CC. Like, I was addicted. It was very bad. But when I started uploading, I decided I wanted my game free of CC, just so more people could download it and add CC if they wanted to. Plus, I think it just ran better without all of that stuff on my um, computer. This was my older Acer laptop, though, and that has now kicked the bucket. Bless her soul. She served me well in college. And by that, I mean when I was in art class, my friends would go watch horror movies in the closet and eat Doritos. Literally, it's a miracle I passed at all. <laughs> all the past haircuts aside, though, we're finally getting into the interior of the build and kind of just doing the layout. I think we pop back outside again. I'm not sure. I'm so bad at staying in one spot when building huge builds like this. I get too excited and I'm like, oh, let's go put this there. Oh, let's go put this here. Oh, a wheelbarrow. Well, this will go well here. I think a lot of people can relate to that, but I'll try to tone it down on my next builds because I know it can be annoying watching people jump around. But yeah, oh yes, um, before I forget, it wouldn't be a Jess Hearts video if I didn't mention my next build challenge. It's a gothic one, so I'm overly excited about it. It's until the 2nd of August, so get your building fingers ready. That's weird. <laughs> but the rules are as follows. You cannot add walls to the outside of the build, but you can add them to the inside. Fences are allowed on the outside as well. Um, you can change up the colours um, of the fences on the outside. They were just like placeholders. You can delete, uh, you can't delete what's already there. And that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, yeah, you can change wall heights. And I'm afraid no CC allowed, just for ease sakes. You don't need the vampire stuff or the spooky stuff pack to do this, by the way. It can be entirely base game or all the packs. It doesn't matter. I don't discriminate. And you must upload it with the hashtag Jess Hearts Build Challenge 4 in the description or the title and I've probably explained that poorly because I suck at um, explaining things but what can you do? <laughs> I am very very excited to see what you guys build. Some of you may know I'm like super into spooky, su um, spooky stuff so this is just going to be su uh, a lot of fun for me I reckon. Also let me know what you want uh, the next build challenge to be of like theme wise, hippy dippy, like I don't know western, greek, asian, I am down for any ideas you guys have. Uh, these are always like so much fun to do. I actually started my own version of the gothic theme build uh, just behind the scenes to have a little fun and it's like overly red, white and black. Like it's like the white stripes just explode all over the place. Like high fives to anybody in the comments that know that band. Pretty sure no everyone knows Seven Nation Army but yeah way off track there. Let's go back to the build. And yeah I thought I'd use that cool little overhanging and put a cool uh, dining area or outside dining area here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of dining areas and seating areas outside, but I wasn't quite sure what else to put outside. Like, um, I could have put, like, some more recreational things outside, but you guys can do that if you want. It's up to you. But yeah, I honestly did have so much fun building this. I was watching the chilling adventures of Sabrina again <laughs> and decorating the build. You may notice... Uh, this with like a lot of witchy shows or movies where they have like little bottles of potions and herbs, books and plants everywhere and it gives a very like eclectic vibe. Maybe that's the wrong word but that's the kind of aesthetic that has always made me feel like super cozy and at home and that's what I kind of tried to do with this build. Honestly the only few things that I think are missing are maybe like a greenhouse and a gazebo aesthetic wise but there is a pen for animals and I've actually seen some amazing creators make like dogs into cows. It is so cool and it's like yeah it's a cool substitute but boy oh boy I want a farming pack for the sims like way more than university at this point. I'd love to be able to take care of animals other than cats and dogs in the sims like I'd love some cows. I love baby cows they are so cute. Like, maybe a llama. Like, have we actually ever had llamas in The Sims? Think about that. I could be wrong, but I don't think we have. And that just feels totally off-brand. But yeah, like I said on Twitter, I did grow up on a farm after we sold the motel we had. And we had heaps of sheep or sheep sheep eye <laughs> but we had a heap of sheep and chickens unfortunately though my fave chicken right her name was fluffy she was the only like little white chicken in the pen all the rest were red i used to sit in the actual coop with her and let her fall asleep on my lap and she used to burrow into my armpit and we had a very very cute bond but of course she was the one that got eaten by a bloody fox then i believe the summer after that i went up to go feed the chickens or play with them or whatever and my other three fur babies had died in their sleep due to the Australian heat and it was so sad apparently I asked my mum like 
why are they sleeping with their eyes closed, mummy? That is so morbid. Like, the trial of uh, the trials of living on a farm, guys, honestly. I will say, though, my mum did avenge Fluffy. Some of you might not like that, but foxes are pests, and I believe that particular fox was sneaking around our house and terrorising our dogs and sheep. So something had to be done. But we did actually have more than just foxes as visitors. Actually, we had, like, we often had, like, blue tongue lizards, and mum and I would feed them uh, tomatoes on the doorstep like they come right up to us so it was super cute I think we had a couple snakes like I remember waiting for the bus at the bottom of our driveway which was like a massive hill by the way and just seeing this dirty great big snake slithering up the road like I love snakes by the way I think they're super cool but like little six or seven year old Jess pegged herself back up that driveway with the bag that was probably bigger than her bouncing around and everything screaming snake to my mum Oh my god. And oh yeah, we also had a huge monitor in our ceiling. If you don't know what that is, it's a huge lizard. And I'm not even joking. One day, I'll get my mum to do a voiceover with me and we can talk about this lizard. But it did keep the rats and snakes away mostly, so we didn't move him. So I guess in a way, we had two dogs, a cat, sheep, chickens, and a dinosaur in the attic. Australia is pretty wild. (laughs) All those stories you hear about Australia having like heaps of deadly crazy creatures is true. (laughs) Well, nah, but yeah, yeah, it is. But it's not as bad as some say. But I guess it depends on location. But yeah, what are we doing now? We're finally doing the living room. And yeah, just stacking paintings and pictures everywhere, trying to give it a really cozy vibe. I also thought having like the TV on a little table next to the fireplace was really cute. Like I don't, I like usually making like the TV a little bit more of a centerpiece, but I felt this was way more realistic. And yeah, I honestly love this living room. I I didn't think it was going to turn out very well, but I'm quite glad of how cozy it feels, you know? But yeah, oh yes, um, let me know if you guys would prefer more tours in the future after this one, especially like if it's a bigger build, I think that might be fun. I know screenshots don't always do it justice, like they don't pick up all the little details plus I think it'd be kind of annoying because you have to like really quickly look at all the details because it changes to the next photo in anxiety I also started to think about maybe doing streams soon in the near future maybe I think that would be super fun to do like like maybe let's do like let's builds with you guys where you can give me ideas of what to do or like Plus, it'd just be awesome to get to know everyone better. But yeah, I won't lie. I'm a bit anxious about that idea, but it also sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. I won't be doing face cam, though. Maybe a long time from now, but not yet. So yeah, let me know if you'd like to see that happen. Also, if you guys stream, give me some advice. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Oh yeah, I also thought of um the Weasley's house, the burrow, a lot when I was building this. Just the little bits and bobs you'd see in the house or any home like this. Like, like it's an actual home where sims have lived and there's character to it like little photos and family pictures and mementos children's crafts and drawings toys on the floor i just think it makes the home super cozy and cute and just like fun to play in honestly a little bit of a dream home imo what's your ideal dream home is it modern like rustic tudor farmhouse tiny home um a caravan <laughs> honestly i swear Sometimes I want a little cabin by a lake and then the next day I want an ultra modern minimalistic house with lots of windows. But I do think a common theme for mine is something with a view and lots of nature. I wouldn't go much living like in a city or in a super built up concreted area if you get me. Although with all these like new items I've gotten so much inspiration for builds it's insane like even modern things. I know we got a lot of like kind of nature rustic kind of items when we got the debug but I'm not sure I'm just loving it so much I just wish it was easy to organize like when we meant to also get a little icon on the right hand side of every new debug object stating it was new I don't know I remember that being a thing in the live stream but anyway and yeah we're on to the bedrooms finally I'm quite happy with how they turned out I just I think I suck at doing kids bedrooms guys I'm not very good at it maybe teenagers a bit more but little kids I just don't think I'm good at it I don't know maybe you guys think I'm good at it but I, we've all got different opinions of what's good I guess also sorry this is a longish kind of video I don't know if you like that or not 
but I try editing it down as much as possible because you will see it all at the end anyway. I will be showing you the bathrooms as well because I don't show them in the speed build because they seem pretty unimportant compared to the rest. But yeah, I'm just a bit worried it's too fast or spinny around you for you guys. At least it's not as bad as doing my first person in The Sims 4. Oh my god. Like, it's super cool. I like the idea, but it makes people feel sick. I've never done VR or anything like that, but I'm hoping I don't get motion sickness from it when I finally do. It looks like so much fun. Like, I want an in-depth simulation of life in VR. And how stupid is that? Like, we get that every day just living. But I think it has to do more with, like, the uncanny valley of it all. And if you don't know what that is, I suggest you go and look it up. Because if I was to explain it, I wouldn't be able to explain it very well. I'm really bad at giving examples. Oh, explanations. See? <laughs> But anyway, I reckon it's time we go into the tour portion of this video, so if you're only watching for that part, get ready. <laughs> Alrighty, we're here and we're going to do a tour of the farmhouse. Now, first up, I'm just going to say, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, there's a lot going on here, so I guess let's start. And I've used a lot of new objects here, you can see. Like, there's just so much new stuff. Unfortunately, this, your sims can't actually walk under. Like, this is just a whole object, and it's super, super annoying. But we'll go over here, and we've got our cute little mailboxes here. I think there's actually a mod out now that makes this functional, so that's awesome. But yeah, let's go through here. Now, this is actually inspired by a real place that I've seen, like a town or two up from mine, where there's this long eyes driveway that goes up with all these trees that kind of go um, side by side along it, and it's just beautiful. But yeah, we'll go over here, and there's a little seating area here where you can have like your Sunday brunch or just a cup of tea, and you can look over at the farm. And yeah, just down here is like all shrubs and like where the fencing didn't meet up. So I just kind of disguised it there and we got ourselves a really cool ute. I actually wanted to put stuff in the tray, but I totally forgot. And since that um, archway isn't actually functional, I put a little fencing area here to kind of, you know, for your sims to walk through if they want to. I think mine automatically did. And we'll go back through here and here's their other car. I like couldn't find a suitable car so I just chose this like poo coloured car. <laughs> and yeah, close up to the house. I'm so proud of this guys. Oh. And yeah, here we have the actual like farming portion. We've got ourselves some sunflowers here, my favourite, and some cabbages and I guess like roses? Roses of different colours here. I kind of just pretended they were tomatoes and put this like where they've been like picking tomatoes and putting them in a little bucket. And in here, we'll go through this little archway, we have our little chicken coop. Or like, I think this is called a cockerel. I'm like, I'm just gonna call it a rooster. And they've got themselves some bread here and some lettuce. I know we feed our chickens lettuce, so that'll do, I reckon. Got ourselves some lavender. I'm not sure what flowers they are. And I think some more lettuce or cabbages. I'm unsure. And we have like, I say like, a cattle pen here and I love doing this like this used to actually be on our farm like then um the previous owner used to have a goat and I think they used to like um keep it in like a little area like this and I even put a dirty tub here for like the water and I put in a little tire swing which I probably pointed out in editing and we'll go back through here through our little archway and this is where the kids can go and swing and play next to the pond. I'm not sure if this is functional just on its own. I know you can't walk over this but I still thought it looked cute. And we'll go around here and there's another little gate area for your sims to get out of. And I've just put a heap of timber down, pieces of wood, and I even put a little area here for like whomever lives here to chop the wood or saw the wood to make kindling and stuff. And I feel like it isn't a farm until you have like a rusted out car, right? And we'll just go through this door and here we have the shed. So there's a lot going on here. We've got a woodworking station, a florist, a bouquet making station. Obviously we got this big boy. We got ourselves a boat. Um, yeah, and tires, just everything I he in here I guess some fish that they've caught some stuff they haven't un unpacked some paint and some brooms and rakes and just everything that you'd probably see in a shed also I'm sorry if the frame rate drops at any point it's really annoying but I, I also haven't turned off my pc for like a day so that's my own fault and then we'll go up here now I'm not sure who would live in here like maybe like 
the farm hand or like maybe a teenager just lives in here because teenage angst I think we've all been there but I think this is honestly one of my favorite rooms in the house I think I should have done a bit more to it but I still love how it turned out and then we'll go through here and then we have a little seating area and we can look over our glorious farm here now let's go around the house. So we've got ourselves another little boat here and our bees. I honestly really want to keep bees at some point. I think that would be a lot of fun. And also I did add some stuff off camera like some dog and cat stuff because obviously you're going to have them on a farm, you know. And yeah, just the outside, back, uh, outside barbecuing and dining area and outdoor chess table. Now, I had to use this. Like, how couldn't I? But they've got two clotheslines just because, you know, they're pretty liberal with their cleaning, I suppose. Got ourselves a little outdoor dining area underneath this thing. Also, how gorgeous are these pavers? I think they're really cute. I think you just type in tile or stone after you've, like, done by the bug and all those cheats. I can just imagine walking around here and hearing the creak of floorboards. <laughs> But we'll go through the entrance now. Here we have the foyer. And yep, it's a foyer. <laughs> like it's just heavily decorated like I've done the rest. I put a little envelope here on that little mirror because I thought that'd be cute. This is one of my favorite spots in the house actually. Like I'd love to just sit here and read books and everything. And I've done all the postcards here. Like maybe they've traveled a lot or a kid of theirs has gone traveling. And yeah, here we have the dining room and the kitchen. Now, yeah, big boy detail going on here. <laughs> I just imagine like maybe one of the kids have done all these drawings and these are their pets that they've had on the farm. The toddler's shoes and just the kids' drawings on the walls. Oh, I just, yeah, I love putting all these detail, all this detail into my builds. It just makes it so much more realistic, I guess. And I, I know not every woman likes realistic um, or realism in their games when it comes to The Sims, but it helps keep the immersion for me personally. And I've put a heap of stuff on these shelves and everything like that. Some festive cards and I've put a lot of these around. I can't even remember what they're called. <laughs> Some dog bickies or animal treats. Yeah, I actually really like this kitchen. Oh yes, and here is like a little breakfast nook. I always like the idea of bre breakfast nooks. I think they're actually adorable. My mum used to play this game or like kind of house designing um, thing called Virtual Home. And I that's kind of what kicks out of my love for this kind of thing. And I used to design homes when I was really little. And uh, she wants to get it back now. But I think it costs like a hell of a lot of money now, which is unfortunate. But here is the bathroom. And yeah, obviously we just got our washing machines here. I really wish they gave us like dodgy washing machines. I think that would have been so much like better. And here we have the living room. And this is cozy AF. Like I love this living room so much also how good are these doors from strangerville but yeah here is the living room um here's a little tidbit if you didn't know you can size down the doll houses and they're still usable just just look at all this clutter <laughs> I spent so long doing this house. It's pretty intense. Oh yeah, I also put a little doggy bed here as well. So I got rid of whatever was there. I think it was a pot plant. And then you go around this little corner and we have the computer area and just like studying area. Another little doggy toy box. Some family photos maybe or like celebrity photos. I'm not even sure. But yeah, I think this is one of another one of my favorite little spots here. I don't know what it is about this little section, but it just makes feel nice and like cozy but yeah let's go upstairs and here we have our landing which is actually just overwhelming in a way <laughs> Um, yeah, what can I say about this room? It's a lot of paintings and a lot of pictures. I also don't know if your sims can go through these doors, but I don't know about you, but like, who didn't put stuff on their door when they were a teenager? Like, I remember being a kid, right, and just like putting on a piece of paper, like a numpad, and pretending like you had to press in the numbers to walk through my door. I'm sure I'm not the only kid that did that. And here we have like the first floor landing or the second floor landing, depending on where you are, bathroom. And yeah, I guess you have like more personal items up here, like where you get ready. And I guess we'll go through here. And here we have the blue room. And actually, you know, you know what? I think I did a decent job at this room. It is extremely cluttered as well on the walls. I think I just went over the top with paintings for this one. And yeah, I also haven't seen my Sims ever use that. So I'm not sure if you need like without any obstacles in front of them, but I still think it works. I'm not sure. 
But yeah, I think this is a cute little room and we'll go to the next one. And here we have the pink room. And yeah, once again, kind of overwhelming, but I really like it actually. I quite like the color pink now that I'm older. I used to hate it. I'd be like, no, I don't want to wear pink. When I was a kid, I also didn't like wearing jeans. And that's not because like I was a total tomboy, right? But that's not because I wanted to wear skirts. It's because jeans would always be so freezing whenever I put them on in the morning. I don't know why we didn't just stick them in front of the fireplace, but you know, we live and we learn. I also like doing this in front of the mirror. Like I know I like putting like the yoga mats or like some incense or a little stereo in front of the mirrors. I think that looks really cute. Also, can you use this item? I'm not even sure. Like, what does it do? Is it a chili bin? But yeah, anyway, let's go to the master bedroom. Now, this room took me ages. Oh, don't you hate that? <laughs> I'll explain why that's like that in a minute. I actually thought I did a really bad job at this room, but now I'm thinking I did a pretty okay job. I wasn't sold on this overhang, but now I'm quite liking it. I think this room is quite warm. I ended up changing the wallpaper, I think, of these two rooms after I finished uh, recording. But I ended up really, really liking it. Plus, like, what a cool view you'd have up here. Oh, man. I love this house. And the reason why this is like that is because I think this is called a truss. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I saw somebody else do this on Twitter and pretty much, just to dissect it quickly, these are two smaller uh, roofs that you paint clear and then you pull out the gables so that way these bits the trimming goes up the front so it looks like this is all one big section and I think it like adds a lot to the house like otherwise it look kind of normal but this just adds a little bit of flair in my opinion and I'm pretty sure I haven't missed out on anything there's no little secrets hanging around but tell me what you guys think of this house I'd love to know what you guys' opinions are if I've missed anything or yeah, let me know what you guys think. But I will be going now, so remember su to subscribe, like and comment, tick that bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!